to our worship today and we want to say a warm welcome to our very special guest speaker as Major Stephen Wilson, our Divisional Mission Enabler, is going to be opening the word for us a little later on in our service. Just to let you know there is a, a letter or two letters in the way in the post to you. One is a, a second letter from the uh, Chief Secretary, uh, Colonel Graves, and uh, this would be accompanied with a letter from ourselves. And there's uh, something of an outline of, of where we are with regards to recommencing our worship. So uh, please watch out for that coming through the post. But just now, here's an opportunity for you to be able to sit back and enjoy worshipping together in your own homes as we, you watch this video wherever you are. And we just pray God's blessing as we share on our worship together.
Our Bible reading today is taken from Acts chapter 1 and verses 1 to 5. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of forty days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you were baptised with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, we want to thank you that we had this opportunity, even though we are apart, to worship you together in spirit. We thank you that we are bound together by the knowledge and experience of your love for us, and that the unity of faith that we have in you. As we watch this video and worship you, our hearts and minds cannot fail to reach out in prayer to the people of Beirut and the horrific tragedy that has struck them this week. Lord, we can't begin to imagine what they must be going through right now, but we can lift them to you in prayer and ask you to bring peace to their anguish, comfort in their sorrow and strength for the task that they have to rebuild their city. Lord, be especially close to those who have lost loved ones. 
and those for whom they don't know what has happened and they're still searching for those whom they care about, their families, their friends. Lord, we pray for also for those who are continuing to battle the virus that is affecting every part of our world. We thank you that scientists are finding ways to tackle the virus, both in terms of cures and vaccines, as well as new and better ways to carry out testing. Lord, help all those who have to make difficult decisions that affect the lives of so many people. Help them to choose wisdom and compassion rather than politics and greed in making those decisions. Lord, we also pray that you will help us to choose love and care in the way in which we respond to those decisions, so that our concern will be for those around us, and that we will respond in a way which reflects your love for all mankind. Lord, we are your church wherever you have placed us, in our homes, in our workplaces, and in our communities. Help us to love with compassion all who are around us, the people who we meet, the people who see us, so they will not just see us, but you living within us. So Lord, wherever we are watching this virtual service today, help us to be open to the leading of your Holy Spirit and to be your witnesses and through this service to bless and encourage each other as you bless us in all that we do in your name. Amen.
Hello kids, I miss you and I look forward to seeing you soon. Well, God's kingdom is different from all the other kingdoms of the world. God values things that are very small, even things like worms. Now let's pretend this candy is like a real earthworm, real worm. I want you to tell me, what do worms do? Do you know? Let's hear some answers. I hope you came up with some great answers. The worms wiggle through the dirt. And as they go through the dirt, they make room for plants to grow. They make room for the roots to grow so that the plants can have a big, strong foundation and that they can get all the nutrients, the water and the minerals that they need from the soil. Worms are very important for our environment. And without this little guy, we wouldn't have all the beauty of the world that we see. Well, sometimes we feel small, like a worm, and we may feel like we don't have a lot of power, but remember to look at yourself as God looks at you. You are very important in His kingdom, just like worms are very important in our world.
so. Stand up and tell it everywhere you go. The gospel, we are not ashamed. Good morning, or is it good evening, or good, even good afternoon? You can watch this at any time, and it's great to share this time with you. I was wondering, are you good at describing things? In 10 seconds, do you think you could accurately describe your room to someone else, so they could picture it in their minds, and if they can draw or create, they could create it in some form? What about describing yourself in 10 seconds? Do you think you could do that? Well, some things are easier than others to describe. How about the church in 10 seconds? Do you think you could describe it? Well, Milton Jones, a, a comedian who's a Christian, has written some books. They're called, the first one's called 10 Second Sermons. And the next one is even more concise 10 Second Sermons. They've gone down well. I love them. They're, they're challenging, they're funny. They start to get you thinking in a different way, really challenge your thinking about different subjects. And we're going to use some of his quotes from his books on the church. But uh, let me, first of all, share my screen with you. So we're going to be thinking of the church. I'll just move myself down there so I'm out of the way of it. But, but the church, in 10 seconds. But before we get to Milton Jones, but this image, what do you think of it? God saying to Jesus, what's wrong Jesus? You said you wanted a church for your birthday. And Jesus replied, yeah I did. But I'm having trouble getting out of the box. What do you think about that? Give it 10 seconds. Have a think. see for me this pandemic which is awful and tragic it has got the church out of its box for me personally we moved to a new estate just before lockdown and because we've been working from home it means we've talked to more neighbors than we ever would have because we're at home more we bump into them have conversations we're building relationships we're getting to know them lady over the road had a baby katie down the road about to have a baby the same day one of my daughters, Hannah, is going to have hers. So we get to know all these things. We're out of the box. We're able to, we can spend time in the community. Anyway, here's some Milton Jones quotes. See what you think. And if at any point 10 seconds isn't long enough, you can just pause the video. The church that Jesus started, like it or loathe it, it's God's chosen community for expressing and representing himself in the world today. Wow, if that's true, what does that mean for you? Going to a church should be like walking to the edge of the Grand Canyon and saying, wow, and I presume it echoed around the place. Is that your experience?
Others think of church as a Winnie the Pooh pyjama suit. Safe and warm, but I hope to goodness no one sees them in it. What do you think? Church is a bit like being a member of a gym. Some people like the idea of going but don't. Others go but aren't really training for anything. And some actually use it to help them with the race they're running. Which one are you? Church should be everyone arriving with one piece of the jigsaw. So does that mean you'd be missed if you weren't there? What sort of piece are you? Visitors to church often find themselves thinking what am I doing here? Sometimes so do the members. But isn't that a great question? What am I doing here? When it works, church is like Lego. Accommodating each other's knobbly bits makes us all stick together. Ten seconds. One of the church's biggest battles is to remain an active fighting unit and to resist becoming a battle reenactment society. But what sort of fight are we in? If you're on a journey, in the same way that the services are not the motorway, a church is not the services. Now this is one that really spoke to me, I'm thinking, yeah, at this time when we can't meet in a church for our services does that mean we're the services where we are what does it mean is the church us where we are 10 seconds But whatever the church is, we don't have to do it in our own power. Jesus said to his disciples just before he left earth, Acts 1 verse 8, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses and you will receive power. Is that the same? for us today 10 seconds you see church it's not the place in which we gather but it's those that do, whether there's two or 2,000. It's those that have become the living stones building the all-inclusive kingdom. It's not the event, it's the people on the mission. In fact, God never even called it church. And those in it, Jesus never even called them Christians. You see, the church is it's beyond categories and denominations, boundaries and boxes. 
We are simply followers trying to place our footsteps on the beautiful narrow path together, whatever we're like. People of the way, the ecclesia, the gathering, the community in communion with God, in communion with each other, in communion with the greatest commission to go and make disciples, to live as Jesus would live. The good news distributors, and not for the sake of ourselves, but for the sake of everyone, everyone else, whoever they are. You know, yes, we meet, we catalyze, but we don't remain inside the walls. Using earthly gifts for eternal purpose, shaping culture with selfless passion. Yes, flawed and faulty as we are, and yet by grace God rescued us. God sought us, God found us, and we found him. And now we find our purpose with people. And the church is the place for every person, anyone, anywhere, everywhere. You don't need a membership fee, no invitation, no qualifications. Grace says incredibly that we belong already. Christ showed us what true love is. And now we're called to show it back to him, but to everybody. Listen to these words from Jesus in Matthew 22, verse 34. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher. Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. Christ showed us what true love is now we must show it back to him and to our neighbor to every one with his life jesus brought our right to be called children of god and the church you and i are his eternal global family his body on earth we are the mirror called to reflect the father's heart to reflect his love, his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, his joy, his kindness. Jesus says in Matthew 5, we're to be his salt, we're to be his light, we're to be that light on a hill. We're to be generous with our lives. Not selfishly consuming, but forever keeping our eyes on Jesus as we run this race, as described in Hebrews 12 taking what God has done inside, outside. The world needs this, his church. This is what we are meant to be. The church whose battle cry is love. Everywhere, for anyone and anywhere. That's what the church is and so much more. I just want to play a song to you. It's a great song. It's called, O Church, Arise. It is in the Salvation Army Songbook. It's 819 if you want to look at it. It was written by Stuart Townsend and Keith Getty. In the first verse, there's this line, an army bold whose battle cries love. But then the final verse says, so spirit come, put strength in every stride, give grace for every hurdle, that we may run with faith to win the prize of a servant good and faithful. As saints of old still line the way, retelling triumphs of his grace, we hear their calls in hunger for the day, when with Christ we stand in glory. Let me share my screen again, and let's listen to it together. Oh, church, arise and put your armor on. Hear the call of Christ our captain. For now the weak and they that they are strong in the strength that God has given. We shield our faith and rouse our truth. We'll stand against the devil's lies. 
So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering, embracing what God does for you as the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God you'll be changed from the inside out readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it i want to read from verse 9 from the street bible by rob lacey unpacking what the church is because it's you and it's me we are the church love has to be the genuine article Hate evil, get a grip on what's good and don't let go. Love each other like the best of brothers. Rate other people higher than yourself. Don't lose your attack. Go for it. Keep on going for it. Keep smiling when chewing over what's up ahead. Keep going when it all goes pear-shaped. Keep hanging in there when you're talking to God. Don't get tight-fisted with God's people. Ring people up, whoever they are. Have people around, whoever they are. Take people out. If someone has a go at you, do them good. Always want the best for them, even if they're out to get you. If someone's got something to celebrate, be the life and soul of the party. If someone's had someone die on them, be there with an arm and a fresh tissue. Get on with each other. Don't get cocky. Mix more, especially with people you'd have thought were below you, in your previous life, that is. Don't act like Mr, Mrs, Ms, Ms, know-it-all. You don't have to fight back. If someone does you wrong, rise above it. You don't have to give as good as you get. Do the right thing. If it's down to you, keep the peace. Take it into, don't take it into your own hands. Don't take it into your own hands. Leave it in God's, they're bigger. As he says in the manuals, it's my job to dole out the punishment. Instead, if your wife looks a bit peckish, buy her a sandwich. If he's spitting feathers, get him a drink. You see, your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. That's being 
the church that is being the church take another look at this what's wrong Jesus you said you wanted a birth a church for your birthday yes said Jesus I did but I'm having trouble getting it out of the box what does that say to you now 10 seconds And the final image where the church is is where you are even if here I'm in the way I'm not anymore where the church is is where you are so here's what I want you to do God helping you take your everyday ordinary life your sleeping eating going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Readily recognise what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Where the church is, is where you are. Whatever it looks like, whatever it feels like, that's where the church is. So I pray God's blessing on you. I'm going to go. But thank you for listening. God bless you.